Ugh, I need to fix this knife. I can do better. One more. Yeah. There it is. What's going on, guys? My name is Tyler, and today we are going to be cleaning up my Wii Esprit. Now, I have another video planned that I'm going to be recording today. Um, it's going to be my top 10 favorite knives that I have experienced in 2021. Um, that's not exclusive to knives that came out in 2021. That is exclusive to the knives that I have experienced. And we're going to talk about the knives that basically brought me the most joy. But before that, because this is on the list of the top 10, full disclosure, I'm going to, I need to clean this up. So I'm going to be cleaning this up and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I clean my knives. So here is some KPL light. It is pretty worn out. I've had it for about a year now and it's still like... A little over half full like that thing's insane here is some just regular heavy duty gun oil if you will so what i use this for is this is like my heavy lubricant i use that on bearings sometimes i'll use that on detents i will use that on detent tracks so this is bearings this is detents and detent tracks and pivots too i use that on pivots as well here's some loctite i'm probably not gonna loctite this guy i really don't loctite most of my knives but if i do have an issue with the backing out i will um so i do have two different tools in case i need them but typically i like to use this one mainly because it has this canister here this canister has well as you can see i have a t6 a t8 and a t10 and what is that a t9 in there along with the hinderer uh, I forgot what you call that, kind of like a little spanner tool, right? And it goes in this guy, and I could just literally spin it around and then launch it out. Now, this is a tool I got from Tractor Supply for like 10 bucks. I talked about it in a previous video. Y you know, it, it's it was on a clearance rack. I can't really tell you where to get it because I don't know. And honestly, it's kind of too big for what I'm doing, but I do love the canister action, so I, it stays around. Other than having to take your Weeha driver and pop it out and swap it out, which sounds kind of mundane when i say it out loud it almost sounds like snobby right not mundane but kind of like oh geez you're too good to pull that out okay let's see what else do i use if i need to i have some canned air laying nearby i have what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna spray down a lot of the oiled parts up with this this is basically called spray nine heavy duty cleaner degreaser i use this anytime i'm trying to do any mod work or just anything that i'm basically clean up this is a, as you can see, there's a screw in there from a wall. Uh, this is a magnetic cup. No real reason to use this. The Wii Esprit, I'm not sure if it has any uh, steel hardware or not, but that's not a big deal. But I just use it as a cup anyway. Other things that I have, um, I have the Benchmade Blue Lube that I've had for about two years now. You know, I, I don't really notice a difference with this. I do notice the KPL works better. This is a little bit thicker than the KPL, and realistically, I should probably use it over the gun oil, but the gun oil is like five bucks at AutoZone. Like, it's seriously not much. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I'm going to need? I have some lint-free cloths for cleanup. I think that's about it. So let's get into it. So, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be working on the Wii Esprit, and what we're doing here is I'm just going to clean it up. I'm going to tear it all down. I'm going to clean everything up. Right now, let's show you guys the action. The action is relatively okay, right? So it's not really so much for the action, but a little while ago I did carve some pumpkins and it's going on a couple weeks now and that was dumb of me. I should have had this cleaned up immediately and I noticed it in another video that I didn't do a good job cleaning it up. So I'm going to tear it down and treat it right, considering this is Le King of the Hill. All right. So first, the cool thing about the Wii Esprit is that it has two screws that go all the way through. That's it. So... These are T8s, I'm guessing. What do I have in there? That's T10. Dum dum. Switch the canister out to T8. What the hell was that? We got a jam in the canister. What's going on here? Hold on. Of course, right when you start a video, the first time something never has happened before, it's going to happen. I got a jeweler over here that'll. Jesus, what is going on? Oh, 
Okay. Yeah, that little spanner tool doesn't want to play nice because uh, it's not technically meant for this. And I didn't mean to engage the spanner tool. That was just me getting a little cocky. All right, T8. We are back in business. These are cheap bits that are in this. So what I'm going to do eventually is as these start to wear out, I'm going to replace them with Weeha bits because you can replace anything in this canister. You can just take out the bit, swap it out for another one. It's not a big deal. As you can tell, that spanner tool is not a technical... <laughs> not a technical tool that came with this let's see here's one these are not magnetic okay this pivot is also a t8 so that's good this is probably one of the easiest knives to disassemble too that's kind of what makes it one of the you know up there right now especially as the king it's so easy i just took out three screws and if we see here the knife has come apart rather ungracefully because I took it apart from the side with the pivot still in it. As you can see, this thing is filthy. I'm ashamed. Bad Tyler. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take... Do I have another cup around here? I kind of have another cup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cup. And I am going to... What is that? It's like grease. I don't want to use that cup. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the hardware on the top of this guy. And then we're going to continue. I'll be right back. Thank you. And we are back. All right, so the whole purpose of what I'm trying to do here is I really just want to get these bearings cleaned out. So I like to soak them. Here's the pivot. Put the pivot there. Actually, the pivot can go in here too because the pivot needs to get uh, clean from the parent from the pivot point there, the shaft. This is just my method. Doesn't have to be your method, but I like to soak them while I'm doing everything else. Kind of break down the oils and start fresh. Next, let's take off the back spacer. We got two back spacer pins. Bam, bam. Okay. We don't need to take out the pocket clip. There's no reason to do that. I'd rather not mess with those screws if I don't have to. Okay, now let's look everything over. Make sure we didn't miss anything. We did. There are washers that can also get cleaned off. These are a part of the titanium scales so that the titanium doesn't get eroded by come on doesn't get eroded by the steel or ceramic bearings i'm assuming these are ceramic but you never know okay you want to fight me you want to fight me go ahead let's fight you son of a okay so that's going in the solution as well okay that's why you always check to make sure you didn't miss anything because it would be a freaking shame if i was going through that and i just dropped it on the ground why is it a shame? Because my ground is carpet. If you guys know anything about carpet, it's impossible to find a freaking part when you're looking for it when it drops there. Okay, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to lay out this lint-free cloth. You could just equally use paper towel for this part. I'm going to lay out a lint-free cloth. Put our parts here. I'm going to spray the parts off camera. Okay. I'm going to just let them sit on the lint-free cloth. Like I said, paper towel works probably better here because she's just soaking up some of the liquid. Be careful of the blade. Obviously, it doesn't need to go said, but it does sometimes. All right. So now that everything's soaking in a manner, if you will... Let's see, did I, was I smart enough to bring myself any Q-tips? I was not. So I'm going to skip the Q-tips unless I absolutely need them. But a lot of times you can use Q-tips to kind of get inside that little, uh, where your pivot goes with, with washers and whatnot. So, okay, so let's clean this sucker off here. Da, 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 da. It's all pretty basic, but if you're newer to the knife world, taking stuff apart 
you initially you're like yeah and then like you probably had that first knife that you really couldn't get back together well that's where this kind of stuff comes into play you can kind of see how it goes back together how other people who have done it before put it back together there's no right way as long as it goes back together just fine right but there's easier ways there's little tricks and stuff that you kind of learn along the way like hinderer for example one of the easiest knives to take apart is a hinderer but it's got those little Chicago fittings, not my skinny, but most of the regular size, the regular size hinders have that Chicago fitting style. What does that do? That creates a situation where every time you lift it up, you're like, oh, this is so simple. It's already back together. And then you lift it up and all your Chicago fittings fall out. And you're like, what? And then like <laughs> you fight it. So the trick there, right, is to put a piece of plastic or tape behind there or tape like a piece of cardboard behind it. And what that'll do is that'll hold those Chicago fittings in place while you're screwing everything else in. It buys you time, and yeah, so that's good. Other tricks like the axis lock, right? So there's no real trick to the axis lock. The trick is, is don't let the axis lock come a freaking part. Most of the time it comes out in like a little canister style setting where the liners are on either side of the axis lock. <laughs> the trick is is to keep that together <laughs> you typically don't have to take that apart you can actually flush it out with air and whatnot save you a lot of time if you have to reset those wash or reset those springs it's not the end of the world but my goodness is it a pain in the butt same thing with automatics i took apart an automatic the other day and it was like miserable i was literally like fighting this thing it was the protec sng and it's because the spring was actually broken in there, but I hadn't taken one apart before, so I didn't know the spring was broke. Well, the spring's supposed to have a tail that keeps that spring onto the blade. So in theory, it should have been easy, right? But because it didn't, I had to re-clock the spring while trying to maintain it on the blade. That was a freaking nightmare. And then I was putting it in the wrong hole because there's two holes, one for the tail of the spring to get locked into, the other for the, um, for the spring to go through. And so I was trying to put it through the real taut hole. I was like, yeah, this thing's going to have a ton of spring. No, you can't get it like that. As soon as I put it in the right one, even though it wasn't locked in, it went together fine. All right, let's switch sides here. I feel like I'm rubbing more grime on this guy. Okay. Kind of inspect it, make sure. If we're going to go through the trouble, you might as well do a thorough job, right? Make sure we didn't miss any spots. It's not about... You can wipe down the blade and make the blade look fine on the end, but it's about actually getting your parts clean. Okay, so next, let's take our pivot. Pivot. Let's get it in here. Clean this sucker off real good. Like I said, I don't use any Loctite as I'm putting these back together because I found that if it just starts getting loose, I'll, I'll redo it. But if it's a knife I carry all the time, for example, my Benchmade Bug Out, my Para 3, I, I carry it all the time, and so what ends up happening is, is I like flip it, and it's like I'll fidget with it, and then after I fidget with it for a while, it comes loose. Well, th at that point in time, that's one that I'm like, okay, I'll I'll put a freaking uh, lock tie on this. You don't want to keep tightening it up, and then yeah, so it gets frustrating. And I'm a Nazi for blade play, so it's like if there's any blade play whatsoever, I go crazy. There's the washer there. So what I'm doing is I'm placing the washers where the track that's already been mount that's already been run, as you can tell. I don't know if you can see there. There's a little line going around. You could tell the bearings were riding on that side, whereas the other side sits flush with the scales. So I want to make sure I put them back the same way. Here's the bearings. For the bearings, basically after submerging them, you just kind of roll them around, get them nice and dry. You don't really want any of that. Uh, stuff still on there the degreaser because what's going to happen is it'll break down your oil if you leave it on there so make sure that you get these nice and clean these are ones where you'll take your can air you'll hold it nice and tight give it a little spray take it to a new spot and dry it off some more what i have also found guys we're talking about action Everybody's changing out their freaking, and these these are ceramic, by the way. They're non-magnetic. Uh, everybody talks about skiff bearings and all. I got to replace the bearings in my knife. 
Yeah, I mean, sometimes your bearings are just garbage, right? Like, if you get those little plastic housed ones, sometimes those ones are really bad. Or if your cage is bent or something. But realistically, guys, your action is a lot less about your bearings. Well, I'll say it's 40 to 50% your bearings. And then the other part of it is your detent strength. By that, I mean your lock bar tension. And by lock bar tension, it's basically how tight your lock bar sits in. You've already felt some frame locks and liner locks where the liner's super tight. That's going to have not as good of drop shot action, right? Why? Because that detent ball is pressing against the face of the blade. I'll show you guys. That detent ball has a tendency to press against this. See where that wear is from the detent ball right here? What that does is as this... Is, t is has tension as the blade's going through, it's pressing onto that exact spot. And until you wear a nice track in there, which with a stronger detent or stronger lock bar, it's gonna be harder to wear that. You're gonna wear it, but you need a deeper track basically, right? In order to do that, it's gonna take time and just flipping. You can force it by pressing in with the detent or pressing it with the lock bar. I keep messing up my terminology. You press that in while you kind of flip it back and forth. That'll wear that a little bit quicker. But once that wears in, you will have absolutely drop shot action with almost any knife, as long as it's on bearings, and the detent strength is not so overpowering, it doesn't matter, right? That's one of the caveats. If it's just so strong, there's not much you can do about it, and that's okay, because you don't need drop shot action. Or do you? Do you? Okay, let's see here. So I put the pivot through on the side, on the show side, I gotta find, I forgot where this thing locks up at. How does, I think I want to say, there it is. So it sits in, see how it's sitting flush. We're going to put that down. Then I'm going to put one of my washers. Doesn't matter which one, in my opinion. Some people like to put them back in the same exact spot. I don't really have an issue either way. So make sure that's seated in there. What I'll do is I'll put a little dab of KPL light. Kind of running around there. It looks like I'm putting more on, but really I'm using the needle to push it around. This stuff goes very, very far. We'll let the balls ride directly on the blade there. Okay, next. Let's address this. This is my backspacer. Okay, so now we have some pins for the backspacer. Oops, sorry about that. Let's see here, do I get a magnet anywhere? Where's my magnet? This will make life so much easier. If you guys got a pretty strong magnet, it does make your lives easier. But I don't know where my magnet's at. There it is. Okay, and here's why. Look at that. I don't have to dig those out at all. You can actually manipulate your parts with it. Hey, get back here. All right, so let's find that sweet spot there. Find that sweet spot there. Okay, so that's locked in place now. All right, so we have the... Da, 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 da. Let's take this out of the way now. We don't need that. Okay, so we put a little bit of... We'll, we'll do it on the blade face. That's what we'll do. So on the blade face on this side, I'll put a little bit of... KPL, and then I'll smear it around. Probably don't need that because you put some on the other side, but it's whatever. And then the last thing that I like to do before I do this, and I've been doing this as of lately and I like it a little bit more, is especially on your pivots that ride tight inside of that blade, which is what you want because you have a lot less blade play if that's riding in there nice and tight. Um, pivot play, if you will. It actually lubes up the inside of that blade, causing it to basically not run around on you base you know if if not run around on you causing it to basically have less friction as the blade rotates around that pivot sorry kind of making up shit as i was focusing on something else okay there's that get that stop pin in there next we're gonna put more kpl on this side smear it around Put the bearings the same way. It really doesn't matter if your bearings are facing down or not. In my opinion, I found that either way works just fine. Try to keep it as they came. 
but it, it really doesn't matter. You'll find it either way. It, it works. Sometimes one way will work better than another just because of the way fitment goes, but sometimes the bearings ride on the blade, sometimes they ride on the steel on the other side. It is what it is, in my opinion. Some may disagree, but... So what I'm doing there is I just put a line of heavy oil where the detent ball is going to ride on that track that it's already wearing in. And the purpose for that is, is it's going to make this glide over that a lot easier. Remember, we were talking about detent strength. That actually helps mitigate some of that which I forgot the washer that is glaring at me. <sighs> that actually helps mitigate some of that uh, pressure on there. Let's see here. That doesn't look like the right side. There we go. There's the right side. So we're going to put that on there. And one last dab of KPO. Now we're going to mount it there. Sometimes that washer will stay, sometimes it won't. I just got lucky. So what I like to do last is I like to start the pivot. And then I do, I'll get the others started. And then I'll tighten the pivot down. And then I'll finish the others. The reason for that is as it lines up, you can kind of make adjustments along the way. Let's see, I think. These go through on this side. That's kind of annoying. Not the end of the world, but the screws go through on the other side while your pivot's on the other side. So as you're working on this, you kind of got to do flip-flop, flip-flop. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Hey, we did something dumb. Look at that. Got to take it back apart. I was not paying attention. No, I'll show you guys what I did in a second here. Let's get this out. See that? That's one of the pins. I put the pin in the wrong spot, so it's going through one of the screw holes. Not the end of the world. We can fix that rather quickly. I'm going to try to dismantle it the least amount possible. This pin. Damn it! All right, so this pin is going to go up here. No, it's not. What are we looking at? This is one of them. This is the... That's what got me. That's the lanyard pin. Silly lanyards. Okay. Let's get back to it. That's what got me. That's a freaking lanyard pin. I'm dumb. I'm not going to re-lube up anything. It's all still there pretty well. Try not to touch as much as possible that going on right there put our stop pin back in place put our blade back in place see what i mean it's not the end of the world like i screwed up and we're back back in business already Okay, now we're back to putting this all back together. Put the pivot collar there. Okay. So, like I said, don't tighten it down all the way. You just kind of snug it up, and then I back it off one turn. The other thing you want to make sure with these captive pivots is that you can get it to seat flush. Like right now, it's not seating flush. So what I might have to do is back this off a couple turns, get this to spin a little bit. See how it's spinning? You got to find that sweet spot where it wants to sit in there. Not the most professional here. I don't uh, take knives apart on camera that often because of reasons like that. You make stupid little mistakes and then you have to double back and everybody who's watching is like, this guy's a jackass. You're a jackass. All right, let's see here. Or you get guys that are staring at your fucking nails the whole time. All right? Your nails are fugly and they leave you a nice little comment and then dip out like they're cool. I'm sure you, uh, you're perfect, my man. Yeah, salty about it. We're salt. 
All right, going back to it here. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Let's see where we're at center wise. The blade appears to be perfectly centered. No back and forth, no up and down. See that? Blade is perfectly centered. Action. Feels pretty good. Let me wipe this off because the excess oil is kind of coming around it here. But you guys see, this is probably the best EDC that I know of. That's why it's King of the Hill. And the action's not perfect. Why? Because that lock bar tension is rather tight. If that lock bar was not, when you're not touching the lock bar, look at that, barely touching it, it has decent drop shut, but you need a little encouragement. When I barely touch the lock bar, see, it's a massive difference, guys, and that's all the lock bar. That is That has everything to do with the lock bar, nothing to do with your bearings. So just to go to prove that point, right? But let's clean up the blade. There we go, nice and clean. And then I will give it a quick strop because I didn't strop it after the last time I used it. So this would be, I'm sure it would appreciate just a quick little strop. I have much nicer strops than this made by Jake from Ohio State, but I have them scattered throughout everything. So, uh, Jake made me some badass drops. Tried to get them to go like and sell them because they're made with like some awesome, awesome leather. But he does not looking to do that. It's just fun for him. One last. I'm not using any pressure when I'm strapping. Okay. Next. To just check my work. I just make sure that I'm shaving hairs off my arm. It's not the best test. Not the end-all, be-all, but it's my test. And it's mine. All right. So this was the disassembly of the Wii Esprit. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you were entertained. It was kind of a boring video, right? Because I wasn't talking about like all the different knife stuff. But it's, it's videos that I enjoy doing. I had to disassemble this anyways, so I was like, you know what? Let's put this on video. My name is Tyler. This is Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp, stay safe, and thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Hey, guys, if you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that like button and or leave a comment. The whole reason this channel was created was to interact with you guys and just share the love of knives. So until next time, you guys stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great freaking rest of your day. Thanks for watching.